A little bit early tonight with free agency going on. I'm Scott Van Pelt. This is Sports Center. We continue with you till the bottom of the hour. And as we continue documenting the free agency story, the point guards, when Utah moved on and traded for Mike Conley, it was clear it was the end of Ricky Rubio's time, though. Word was they were planning to move on prior to that. Three years and $51 million means he will be a point guard out in Phoenix with the Suns. Derrick Rose, former MVP, had a career renaissance this year with the Timberwolves after injuries threatened to completely derail it. Heads to Detroit, two years, 15 million. He averaged 18 a game, had a 50-point game last year, and now he's got a new home. Kemba Walker to Boston had been reported by Woj for several days, and as it ends up, it's part of a sign and trade with the Hornets. Kemba gets a four-year, $141 million max deal from the Celtics. Rozier heads to Charlotte for three years and 58 million as per sources. The newest Boston South to Kemba Walker is our guest on SportsCenter. And Kemba, as we were getting prepared to start, you, you said today was surreal. What part about this day is the hardest part to kind of make sense of? Uh, I think the hardest part for me is, um, you know, having to, you know, leave the city and the organization that, you know, I've been a part of for eight years. Um, the organization that gave me my first opportunity to, you know, go from a boy to a man in this league. You know Charlotte, you know the place that I love very much. Um, it was a really tough decision, but you know, you know something I had to do in order to, you know, try and fulfill some dreams of mine and compete. So, you know, it's one of the it's one of the toughest things. You know, I, I, I definitely had to do in my career. So as this is coming into focus and you're and you're working through that, wh what was the most important determining factor to, to tell you I got to leave this place behind me and, and move on to the next thing? Um, I think that, that's what it was, moving on to the next thing. Um, you know, just moving on to a whole new chapter in my, in my basketball career. Um, you know, I gave that city, I gave that organization every single thing I could possibly give them. And, um, you know, now, you know, it's about competing at the highest level, um, which, you know, we all know Boston is doing that year in, year out. And, um, you know, I want to be a part of something you know, really special as far as, you know, being, being able to compete at the highest level and, you know, um, give myself the best opportunity um, to make, you know, a run in the playoffs. You can hear the New York City in your voice, and we know that you played in UConn as well, and now you, you take it even further to the Northeast and, and Boston. And I just am curious, growing up, whether it was back in the day or in UConn or wherever, just what the idea of the Celtics represented. Oh, man, when you think of the Celtics, you think of championships. Sure. You think of winning. Um, and that's what I'm about. I'm about, you know, competing for championships and winning. You know, that's something I haven't been able to do throughout the, you know, the early years of my career. Um, you know, I haven't been a consistent winner in this league. And, you know, I just felt like Boston was the best fit for me to, you know, try and accomplish those kind of goals you're one of the huge stories but we had an idea this might happen and there's all these kind of shocks that well this guy's going here this guy's going there how much are you a consumer Kemba of what's going on of whether it's your friends or the teams you're going to compete with the, the craziness of this day how much are you able to pay attention um not much at all honestly I'm I'm really finding out everything through my friends um, these guys have been texting me in the group chat and let's just just Whoever signs somewhere, it just comes up in the group chat. So, um, yeah, th that's that's my that's my lifeline right there. Without those guys, I I wouldn't know anything. I, I wasn't gonna ask the corny question about tweets, but I do. I am curious about this. Like, what level friend slash family member do you have to be to get a return text from you today? Because I gotta believe that that bubble is like 200, 300, whatever. What's the level to get a return and reply? <laughs> oh man, you got you got to be up there. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine so. I imagine so. Listen, uh, as the line goes, uh, you could have been anywhere in the world tonight, and you're here with us, and we appreciate it. I know you got places to go and people to see and celebrate. So thank you so much, Kemba. Good luck in Boston, all right? No problem. Thanks for having me. I appreciate News it. News-breaking killer, this wrecking ball of a man, Adrian Wojnarowski, joins us, and we have a bit of a running joke about tweeting from the set. And by the way, if you have stuff to tweet, tweet it.
Don't ask permission. It's can, just, I, can I break it on the show? You do whatever you want to do. You're Woj. And seriously, today you've been obviously owning uh, this day, which is, is your time uh, to shine. And it starts with this afternoon where it comes into focus that Durant is suddenly going to announce on his site. Then, no, you tweet he's headed to the Nets. How does this happen? Well, the Brooklyn Nets owned this day. Sean Marks, Kenny Atkinson, that organization, what they have done in three-plus years, I mean, that organization was in disrepair and to think that they could go out and get not only Kyrie Irving Kevin Durant they've got DeAndre Jordan coming in but you know Kyrie Irving made a decision weeks ago uh -huh. maybe even longer he was going to the Brooklyn Nets he looked he wanted to come home to New York he looked at the two organizations he saw the future in Brooklyn and I think for Kevin Durant it became certainly it was a very difficult decision to go to New York go to the garden alone you know, I think you, you look at L.A., um, you know, LeBron James had a tough time walking in there alone. Now, he's got Anthony Davis. It's working out. Sure. But just remarkable, the turn of events and, and what that Brooklyn organization has done. And they are going to be, they have a chance to be one of the franchises in the NBA. There's also the question about, you know, his injury and how long that'll take, you know, what that will, what he'll be when he returns. And, uh, I mean, there's still some question marks, but there's no question this is a home run. And we've said this tongue-in-cheek. I'll just say it one time. This all happens before 6 o'clock. So, like, did, like, you know, that, that, that's against rules and all, you know? I mean, the conversations, how, like, how do we arrive into all these things happening? That's a conversation for another day. You got something? No. Go ahead. Seriously. <laughs> if, like, read what it just... No. It was actually my wife. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be... No. You're not going to, he'll talk to you the fourth or the fifth. Fourth or the fifth ish. Uh, actually, at the pace we're on, it might be done by tomorrow. Um, I, the, I did have one GM say to me tonight, he thought the fact that it started at 6 p.m. instead of midnight um, impacted the action we saw. It's hard to do all this stuff at 1, 2, 3, 4 in the morning. The fact that we've had this run up, I think, impacted the, the flurry of activity today. Jimmy Butler sign and trade. You had that one as well. He goes to Miami. So what's, what's, what all was involved in making those pieces fit? Philadelphia was not giving him that five-year max he wanted. They weren't giving him a four-year max. They were out of Jimmy Butler business. They went out, got Al Horford. And Jimmy Butler, you know, had the chance. Miami, Houston, I was told he liked the idea of being more of a centerpiece player in Miami. Remember, the Heat came very close to trading for him in Minnesota. A couple of deals fell apart at the last minute. So... Jimmy Butler goes there, and now Philadelphia bringing back Josh Richardson, uh, signing Al Horford to a deal, 109 million, but 97 guaranteed. Mm -hmm. As good of a defensive team as maybe anywhere in the NBA right now. And, and I wanted to ask you about Horford because that was a significant one that you had as well. The, the, the mystery team, who was it? Because we all kind of felt like, man, if he was going to not take what Boston had, there had to be something out there. That's what out there was Philly. So you stay in that division as a, ri as a rival as well. Um, that, that has to thrill Elton Brand and the Sixers to get him coming back, even at a fairly steep price, I think. And, yes, and, and look what it does for the locker room. There's not a more mature, there's not a better leader, there's not, there's not more of a grown-up in the NBA than Al Horford. 12 years in the league, 12 playoff appearances, five-time All-Star. And they lose J.J. Redick to New Orleans, and that's not insignificant. He no, who shoots for them is a question. Right, and at, but bringing Horford into that locker room, I think he's going to be tremendous on and off the court for Joel Embiid because if Embiid's going to miss time at any point, Horford can go over and play the center. He can play the four when they're on the court together. And I know because we were talking off air that there's, there are still significant things that are, that are percolating. There always are. Always are. And um, yeah. I, would, I would just say keep your phone nearby. I know he will, and when, uh, when there's the next one, you'll, you'll know. Woj, thank you so much. Thanks, Scott. An extension, it sounds like this. Four years, 196. The uh, Athletic first reported this, and given the contributions there, the gigantic shots that have been hit, what he represents to that team, I think we all understand why Dame Lillard gets that reward. All right, Christoph Porzingis traded, of course, from New York to Dallas. He's agreed to extend his stay in Dallas, five year, 158 max contract. So tee up with Doncic, team up with Doncic down there in Dallas, ride together for the next five at a very healthy 158. All-star Chris Middleton declined a $13 million player option, instead agrees to a five-year $178 million deal to remain with Milwaukee. Second round pick averaged 18, 6, and 4 for the Bucks, who won a league-best 60 last year. 
I know it's not the sexiest team. He's not the sexiest player, but he's being paid like one. And Tobias gets 158 for five years as he is staying in Philadelphia. Of course, he came over in the trade from the Clippers. And all told, on Sunday, there were, there were seven players who signed the largest contracts in the history of their team. Four of them are with the team they played for last year. Three of them, Durant, Kemp, and Butler, will be joining a new